political groups within the All Progressive Congress APC in Lagos, including the Mandate Group and the Justice Forum, the two most powerful groups, will no longer exist, according to the communique issued by the party leaders and the state after a meeting. This is coming two weeks after Rahouf Arek Beshola, the Minister of Interior, reorganized the Mandate Group without the endorsement of Bola Tinubu, the national leader of APC. However, national leader of APC Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu and the Minister of Interior, Ogbeni Rahouf Arek Beshola, yesterday dismissed a perceived frigid relationship between them. Joining us to discuss this is Mr. Lanry Suraj, a political analyst. Thank you, Mr. Lanry, for joining us. Thank you, Karadi, for having me. Okay, let's get straight to the issue. I, I, as much as uh, you are a political analyst, let me also put it on record that uh, you have some kind of close relationship with these two men that we are talking about. Someone would say that if truly there is nothing between both of them, what necessitated this disbandment? Well, I, I think there's um, a whole lot of political rejigging and also political realignment. And to a very large extent, um, political pension that you will witness uh, between now and 2023, uh, there's a whole lot of, you know, mutual suspicion. Um, that you will have within the political landscape. So you trust politicians for whatever it is. Even some moves that are not political in nature would have political readings and also meanings and interpretation, depending on which side uh, you are hearing uh, the narrative. For. But the most important thing is that um, within the political landscape, uh, the game for 2023 at the state and also at the federal level, is already uh, in top gear. It's only non-political people that would uh, be surprised at some of the development that you would be witnessing. Um, but, but reading beyond that, it's extremely difficult to say that this is um, as a result of conflict between the two uh, principal persons that you have mentioned. Um, to a very large extent, th these are two people that have come a very long way. Uh, and from all indication, no serious you know, um, issues to actually uh, necessitate any form of um, discordance or disagreement within their midst. Uh, let it also be put on record that the two or several other platforms and groups that are fingered in, in the whole uh, discussion, I cannot actually be disbanded, disbanded by pronouncements uh, because it's a constitutional right for people to freely associate. So the party can say as a party, uh, we don't want to relate with our members uh, on the basis of any group. So we are not going to be giving slots to particular groups in, the, in determining uh, the appointment of offices or election to offices. So the party can, as its own party and as a party, decides to say we're not operating on the basis of our affiliation to any group, but the party can't stop group from existing or from relating. It is a constitutional right, and people can freely associate uh, with um, themselves under whatever platform they choose to be. Okay, let's look at uh, a lot of people who probably may be hearing these, uh, these factions, call it, if you want to call it factions, as much as uh, APC core leaders may not agree that these are factions, or these two groups, people, uh, probably we need to put them, put them on the same page. Now, we, uh, the Justice Forum will understand that uh, the Mandate Forum was uh, 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 created by... Uh, Ashiwaju himself, and at the time, Arik Beshola almost became like the number one person in this forum. And we understand that uh, the Justice Forum, where we have the likes of Fashola and we have the likes of uh, uh, Benga Shafa and some other members of APC in the state, uh, uh, what does this tell us about having these kind of groups? And has there been issue between these two groups? For you to be, for them to be disbanded. 
No, there's really not been any serious issue. I mean, if you remember um, the Alliance for Democracy that um, transformed into Action Congress, Action Congress of Nigeria, and then eventually APC, um, had you know, those groups because it's more or less like a rainbow coalition of different platforms of the progressives uh, where the Justice Forum can be traced to um, Kofo Bokno and the rest of them uh, as a very strong, formidable platform in the Alliance for Democracy. Um, the likes of uh, uh, Tinumbu and the rest of them were then in the mandate group. And it was on the platform and on the basis of that influence that they actually also control in many of uh, the areas in Lagos, that they um, kind of relate and do the power sharing. So um, it is something that has been in it. So, I mean, the likes of Fashola, uh, Shafa are not really major factors in, uh, in Justice Forum. That these are not foundations. These are actually, the two people that you've mentioned are products of Tinumbu. So many of those that you have in Justice Forum or um, Mandate Group are all products of, um, uh, and part of the Ashwajubola uh, political uh, hegemony. So it is not a new set of any power play between any, as, as Lagos State is it, 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 it is today uh, with regards to APC. There's really no other contending force um, against Tinumbu in, his, in it. All the two um, groups, and this needs to be stressed and also understood, all the two groups take their instructions, influences, and derive their influences and benefits uh, from the party and from the state government, from uh, Tinumbu and from Bodilon. So Mr. It, 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 don't, don't let me be Yes. Uh, uh, Mr. Larry Suraj, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, we remember how Ambode was ousted out of the primaries. We remember how the game played out when the mandate group declared the, the, uh, uh, him as, uh, you know, vote of no I mean, declared vote of no confidence in this man. And we also remember um, the issue as we speak, what is going on in the House of Assembly where we have these two groups also coming up with different views. I, I, is, is it right to say that uh, these are not two groups having different purposes? No, um, with the Amber Day thing, uh, it, it was just once the, once at the, it, it was just a function of, I mean, so I can tell you, Amber Day was not from Justice Forum. So Ambody was not even part of a uh, mandate group. Ambody does not really belong to any of the groups. It's just a function of who at what time um, is in support of who. So if Ambody thinks at, at some point that the most um, vocal opposition to his government or to his succession or to, uh, uh, to his benefit, are more from the mandate group, then you possibly will just run to the Justice Forum to go and start, you know, um, cultivating a relationship and also using them. So I remember, everybody was not even using Justice Forum. Everybody was more or less creating his own platform across the local governments to use for the purpose of uh, re-election. It wasn't you, he wasn't really using the existing platform for that. Um, in the... Uh, House of Assembly currently, there's really no division about um, the group. Uh, it's basically just a function of, and that is why you're not really finding anybody speaking up in the House. It's almost the same thing. I mean, there's really nothing that you want to accuse Obasa of in the House of Assembly. And most members of uh, the Assembly are not equally guilty of. Uh, he came openly to tell the world that the wives of the honorables actually also got the four four million uh, to go to Dubai, and nobody said they didn't get that. So they've all been uh, mentioned in the whole thing. So they're united when it comes to the issue of you know sharing of the loot. Uh, it is only when it comes to the contest for office that people then go down uh, to adopt their sentiments and also their affiliation and then use it as a basis to, you know, um, 
their own advantage in terms of seeking political appointments Suraj, and also political Mr. Mr. Suraj, uh, I, I, I'm not saying that uh, what you're saying is not correct, but I stand to be corrected. Are you saying that the likes of Obasa and the former member of the House of Assembly, who is now a senator, that's uh, Senator Bayo Oshinawa, are not at logger eggs? Are you saying there is no tussle for who controls that particular uh, power block? Because no, analysts no, will remind no, you that... That does not... Look, let me, let, me, uh, let me explain this to you. That does not mean that they belong to this different political camp. So they can both be of the same mandate group. That does not mean one... Because I can tell you, that you can go and anywhere, Obasai emerged as the Speaker of the House of Assembly on the back of the support of um, Oshino. I never supported Obasai. I could never imagine Obasai would be a speaker. I supported a different candidate uh, when the contest was on. I, I was looking for a more refined, more decent, you know, person imagined as a speaker of Lagos. And Oshino was carrying Obasai like there was no other better candidate. So the fallout between, um, you are having between Oshino and um, Obasai, Within the house, it's not as a function or outside. Yeah, it's not as a function. They are belonging to different political groups. No, it is as a function of the disagreement in sharing the loot in the house. So we must really put it <laughs> at that and then understand it for that. It is when they disagree at the point of sharing the loot that you hear this crisis. It is not because of their political what, differences. But, but, but no, what, not do at you, all. what do you say to that conspiracy theory that this is this control is coming from the Minister of Interior, Eric Beshola, who is believed to be the the, the power block, the the the, the, eg, the hegemon, if you if my if my if I might use that word in that area. And that seems to be like, oh, there is an extension of his influence, and this is leading to this kind of crisis. What do you have to say to that conspiracy theory? Well, the, the conspiracy theory is only coming from those who, who, don't, who lack the understanding of the operation of that Ashiwaju political hegemony. There is really nothing that um, the Minister of Interior would want to get from Ashiwaju that he would not to get that he wouldn't get, except where Ashiwaju as a person has a personal difference interest. And there is nothing that Ashiwaju wants to get from um uh, Openi Rauf Akbeshola that he would not get from him, except if he had also a personal interest. And where that is own interest conflicts with that of the interest of Ashiwaju, I can tell you without any fear of contradiction, that Arabi Shola will drop it for Ashiwaju. That is the level of the loyalty that some of us have come to. That is even part of the thing that quite a number of the friends of um, um, of Benny Rauf would even tell you that is seen as part of the shortcomings of uh, the Minister of Interior, okay. that as long as his boss wants something, he doesn't in any way, at any point in time, confront his boss on anything, once he tries to convince the boss, and the boss chooses to remain adamant, he drops it and allows the boss to have his way. Thank so you. if you really understand the game within that political dynasty, you wouldn't um, really make mistake about it. If Ogbeni wants Obasa to be removed as the Speaker of the Lagos State House of Assembly, within one week, he would get him out, except Tinumbu would say, okay, leave him there. And if Tinumbu should say, leave him there, I can tell you, Ogbeni would not support any, anybody, anybody to, to remove him. Thank you very much, uh, Larry Suraj, uh, for your take on this issue. Thank you so much, Larry Suraj. Like I, uh, like I introduced you, that you're a friend to these two political actors. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. And that's My how far we can problem. take with you. We hope that uh, some other time we'll have more time to discuss some of the political issues. And that's how far we can go on this discussion. Stay tuned. <laughs>
the consideration of the nation's revised 2020 budget was stalled on the floor of the Senate following the exclusion of about 186 billion naira expected to be part of the budget of the health sector for the year 2020. The chairman of the Senate Committee on Appropriation, Jibrin Barrow, drew the attention of the Senate, alleging that representatives from the Budget Office have not given the issue the seriousness it deserves. Out of the 500 billion naira earmarked for intervention in respect of COVID-19 pandemic, only 314 14 billion is actually captured in the budget. So we have to draw the attention of the budget office and indeed the minister to this obvious error. We sat with the budget office, uh, the DG budget office, who was insisting that they thought that since that full amount was captured in the MTF, there was no need for that one in the city to be captured in the full budget, in the, in the, in the appropriation bill. We said no. That will be against section 80 and 81 of the Constitution. Everything has to be captured in the bill. So we put a call to uh, the minister, a student to the minister, that there's a need. If actually they want this money to be spent, there should be a letter telling us to include that into the bill. Then she promised that uh, she was going to send a letter yesterday, and we waited to the end, up to the end of our uh, business yesterday. That letter has not come. So we are giving them today, up to the end of close of work, if you don't bring the letter, we, have no, we, will, not, we will not have any option but to present the bill as, uh, presented, I mean, as given to us. This is my take. While it is true that bickering and tantrums and even many times political rhetorics are part of politics all over the world, what is unacceptable is the violence that characterizes the power play by political actors and their followers. Time and time again, the saying that there is no permanent enemy in politics but permanent interest has proven to be true. Therefore, let's just see these as a game and nothing more. Because if indeed the purpose of seeking power is to serve, then ascendancy into power should not come at a cost of any life. And that's my take on tonight. Thank you for joining us on tonight's show. Plus Politics returns tomorrow evening with equally interesting discussions. Until next time, I am Coyote Ladende saying bye.